when you pick up the Word of God and you do not pick it up to find out about Jesus and study Him, how He thought, how He felt, what happened when He walked, what He said, what He did, you go into every other place. You don't listen to him because you've already shut him off. You don't obey him and you can't. Or you say you do. You use his name. You use the power of his name. You use everything. Uh, you go into the epistles before you are ready to understand Jesus Christ. Because you haven't sought him. You haven't really, really in your heart. All of your life, somebody has given you a picture of Jesus Christ. And that picture probably more than likely came from Hollywood, who didn't know him. Uh, it, is, it is very uh, foolish for people to seek out a God that they don't want to know and they don't know because they are not God chasers they are chasers of prophecy oh they want to know everything about it they are told study the word they are told by Bible colleges study this study that go to uh, book, chapter and verse they're, they're told and taught to do this and so you go on in there and you study and your Bible college teachers cannot give you something they don't have they just don't have it I mean one of the greatest uh, supposedly greatest teachers that produced a lot of people who come out of there who are very rich today who knew exactly how to obtain money how to reach uh, the people and get the people to do what they want to do just like the politician they they know how to reach the people they know how to uh, <clears throat> touch the emotional cord the emotional cord of men and women who are usually very poor and very desperate and very needy of love so they run to you and and they run to your leaders and you don't give them that you don't give them what you don't have well you say you do but <clears throat> you lead them into prosperity you lead them into you lead them into the things that you think God wants them to have and when you lead a person into prosperity it's usually been all about money it's usually been not caring about the people you're preaching to. God gave you gifts. He gave you wisdom. He gave you understanding. And most of all, he gave you the power to reach people. And what did you do with it? Ask yourself a question. Did you lead them first into the study of Jesus Christ? Did you lead them first to get to know him? As a person to get to him, know him um, no you you led them into church history you led them I'm talking about leaders you you led leaders this way you led them into church history you led them into prophecy you led them into things that would attract attention Jesus's life would have attracted attention to anybody in need very few, very, very few of you, any of you know how to do that. Well, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I went and I studied and I went to Bible college and, and my leaders, they taught me this. And, oh, we prayed and, and God came down and he did this and he did that. Well, listen to what I'm going to tell you. There are people on this earth that have died all around you all around you because you were not feeding God's people you were feeding yourself I'm not saying all preachers 
I'm not saying all teachers. Some of you really have done a good job. But if your attraction is your prophecies, if your attraction is your prophetic books, if your attraction to Jesus Christ, and it leads people into look for some, looking for the supernatural, yes, Jesus is a very powerful, supernatural person, very powerful. You don't get that way by studying prophecy first, prosperity first, people first, other people, heroes first. He got that way through his relationship with God the Father, which was developed from the time he was little. He came on to the earth as a baby. And so every, and, and the scripture says this, every experience that he had, he learned by the things that he suffered. He learned. You can make him whatever you want. You can say whatever you want to about him. But he was without sin. That means he was holy in body, mind, and spirit. He was holy thinking. He was holy feeling. He was filled with compassion for his children because he understood their every single temptation. His love was so great, he willingly knew to go to the cross. But you see, you're tired of that. You are weary of that. So it does, for years it didn't get preached. You really didn't preach the gospel. You preached how to. How to obtain this. How to obtain that. And you put it just like the world does. They have combinations. You turn this knob in the feeling and memory, you turn that way, and you will know how to instantly lose weight. You turn this way, you turn that way, and you will know instantly how to do something. And so how do you keep control of the masses? How do you keep their power and their attention? You certainly didn't do it with Jesus Christ. Because if you did, there would be more people right now that would understand how much he loved them. Not by telling them every single time how he died for them, but by leading them into the word and not to you. By leading them into the truth. But you see, in your thinking and what you've been taught, even in the Bible colleges, that if you do that, you will lose their attention. So Jesus, he just was of no profit. And you empower the world to do what they want to with him. Because you haven't taught about him. You've taught about yourself. You've taught about your church. You've taught about your doctrine. You've taught about your people. You've taught about your heroes that you seem to think that you have patterned after. You even took some and taught them about demons. You taught them about things that they did not need to know first. So then when you got out and went into the world, you went into other places. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Right here is your world. Right here in your communities, right here is your life in Christ, right here first, first, right here in your neighborhood. How much did you teach them how to pray so that the little girls on the block aren't raped and used and abused? How, how much did you teach them to pray 
to fast and pray to defeat the enemy and free the oppressed. How much did you pray? Did you pray the way uh, Isaiah 50, 58 says? Did, did you literally fast and pray to, to bite and to smite? Did you literally fast and pray to go against what you thought should be judged, should be condemned, and should be killed? Did you fast and pray so that these people who are deceived because of you, listen to what I'm telling you, it's because of you leaders who have taught the wrong thing, who have looked upon the wrong thing, who have led people like a Pied Piper into giving money. Oh my goodness, you have your, uh, they're as good as any telethon. And they go into the word and God showed them this and God revealed that. It's in the Old Testament that this is what you should do and how to tithe and how to do all this. Because you see, you've told them all the church is poor. The church is so poor. They need this and they need that. And then you go in your jets and you fly off to another part of the world. And you say, well, we love these people. Where was your love for your people? Where was your love for America first? So you wind up with leaders. Oh, we can't preach and talk about politics. We can't even think to know who is who. But then you see, we can say, well, if they confess Jesus Christ, then they must have him. And we can't touch that. Ooh, no. Forgetting the word says you don't go by what they say. You go by their fruits. So therefore, you are so foolish that you get your eyes on somebody that doesn't care about this country, never loved this country, has proven it today, hates the flag, wants to trap on, tramp on it, hates everything about America because they're not number one Christian. They say they are and oh you can't touch that because what they say is you can't touch it. Because if a man claims or a woman claims to have Christ surely they must have Christ. That's not even the word. That's not in the word. He tells you to go by their fruits. What kind of fruits do they have? Do they lift up traitors? Do they lift up people who deserted and, and were responsible for having our soldiers killed while they played around with the nation that they were supposed to be fighting? And then they come home and you give them medals When I say you give them medals, you did by supporting. And then you teach, you go into the, the congregations and you teach, you must pray for your leaders. The Bible says, pray for your leaders. How do you pray for people who are traitors to their own country? How do you pray for people who are liars, who claim to be Christian and they, they're a different religion? In secret, they worship a different religion, so nobody will know, and they laugh. They're laughing at you. They're not just laughing at the poor people that you've led astray. They're laughing at you because they see you out there trying to impress them. They see you out there walking around with no mind of knowing how to talk to people. Oh, you know how to pretend. You're real good at it. Boy, do you know how to pretend. You know how to walk around and you're waiting on God and you're walking around like this, waiting on a signal from God to know what to do. But if you studied Jesus Christ, if you would have gone to your Savior, at no time would you have been in that condition. No. You inherited everything. Your parents were the greatest preachers of all time. You inherited that. And 
your leaders were the greatest preachers of all time. Why, look at that. And so many thousands of people, millions of people follow you. That proves you've got God. Why, the one that is seeking Jesus Christ is all alone. They're all alone. Because you've seen to it that they're all alone. They have sought the word. And when you see them coming, oh my. When you know something is in them that is greater than what you have, what do you do? You, you become the Jezebel that you claim they are. What do you do? You kill them and you take it off of them. And you do it by labeling them as a Jezebel. Why? Because you see power and you can't have people following these people in your church because you're afraid they'll take your throne you're afraid they'll expose you you're afraid that people will follow them the way they did Jesus because you see some of them and I'm not saying all of them some of them have Jesus but you haven't allowed it to be shown you haven't allowed it to manifest in the church and you even label them with demons. I wanted to assure you, every single person that sought after God to know him, to love him, to understand him, that walked into your church, that you labeled with things that were not of God, you are the one that has the problem. And God is going to expose that. God right now is exposing the leaders. Now, he's been working on exposing the world, the world leaders. I'm telling you, political correctness came out of the church. Knowing how to demonize somebody came out of the church. The church leaders are the ones that did this. Like I said, not all church leaders, not all of you, but enough of you have done this. You think that all you have to do is destroy and demonize someone because you have millions of followers. But those millions of followers, they want, a lot of them want Jesus Christ. They don't want you. They want Jesus Christ. They're tired of being told, give every penny you got and God will bless you. Do you know that every single person that goes into the word to search after Christ and get him in their heart and mind without pounding him in with, with uh, 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 memorization, pounding him in with, with without hours after hours of worship. There are many people that are foolish enough, foolish enough to believe they could live any way they want. They could do anything they want as long as they worship God. They can be anything they want. And that's why you have worship leaders with their cleavage cut down to here where everybody could see everything they own. That's why you have worship leaders that are walking around feeding people the wrong thing. That's how you have worship leaders that have daughters that go out in, in bikinis and witness to men who are 35 and 48. But oh, that's God. They are so anointed. They have got, why they go into healing rooms and they chase out demons and, and they know so much because all of you are prophets. All of you know how to do these things. All you have to do is get that combination in those books that you have written and turn it this way and then turn to the left this way and then turn to the right this way. That's all you got to do. And then you've got God. And then, my goodness, you have followers. 
Jesus didn't do that. He did not encourage any teenage girls, any, any girls of any kind, to walk naked before men to attract them. You, hey, <laughs> I'm a preacher. I've got this church. I've got this ministry. I've got people giving me money and, and they're tithing to me. I've got, I've got people doing this. And you see that one over there? <laughs> they don't have any prosperity. So nobody's going to follow them. So by the time my book was picked up by people who claim to have God, by the time it was picked up, they both start laughing. They said, you know what? As strong as that word is, nobody's going to believe them. Nobody's going to listen to them. Because they had it all sewed up. They had the political world sewed up and it's set in place. And they had the spiritual word world sewed up in place. And you have people right now sitting there talking about the supernatural experiences of people. Anything to attract. Anything. I wrote to one of those people and talked to them about the glory of God. And they put out a message not even knowing what the glory of God is. They know how to attract and they know how to, to claim that they know everything. And they invite people that have had these supernatural experiences. If you don't have him in your heart, when you look at him and you see him in the word, and you don't know not to seek out the living among the dead, when you don't know how to see him and love him so much that you will hear what he has to say, not, not what some preacher has to say. If you don't love him like that, you're going to, when you desire to have a ministry and you're nowhere near ready for it, suddenly you get attacked what you say is by demons because you've opened a door. You've opened the door to giving them the glory and the credit. So you gave your life to God and you didn't believe him. You gave the devil the credit and the power to touch you by believing that you have to study the demons. You have to know their names. You have to know... All you needed to know was Jesus Christ. Oh, but you're ready for you're ready for ministry. You're just you're out there and God's called you to a ministry. And you want to know something? I'm sure he has. But that doesn't give you the power to take his word and and overthrow God from the throne of your heart. That's what you do. When you study demons and you don't study Jesus Christ. You are taking Christ out of the Bible and just kicking him out. Because that's unimportant. We've all heard that he died for us. That's, a, that's unimportant. We all know that he walked on the earth and he, he healed and delivered. We all know. Check. I mean, that's stuff we know. As I told you before, God gave me a scripture. And I'll never forget it. And I'll say it to you again. And this is like 30 years ago when he was teaching me how, how to follow him. Not a preacher, not a teacher, not in books, nowhere but in that Bible, how to follow him. But because I had read that particular scripture so many times, I could not imagine in my head or my heart that he wanted to say something through that scripture because you see at that time I was still filled with self I was still sure I knew everything I was still sure that I understood everything because I read it so many times I mean 
I read it over and over and over, and I got this out of it, I got that out of it, and surely there's nothing left for God to give me. So what did I do? I would not read it. And every time, every day, God gave it to me, and I would not read it. Because I knew better. I mean, <laughs> I know Christ. I know him. I mean, I've been with him for, what, 20 years? We're talking 30 years ago, so that would have been, I, I've been with him. So why would I need to read a scripture I already know by heart? I already know what's in it. But every day, he led me to that scripture. And like I told you, to the end of the seventh day, it hit me. When he spoke to my heart and said, Do you know who you are telling? You don't need my word. Boom. <laughs> Big time. Boom. It reminds me of the time that my daughter as a baby, she deliberately sat in her little high chair, looked at me, and the food I gave her, she went like this, and spit it right out and looked at me real defiant. And I put it back in her mouth and she spit it out again. So I undid on the tray, put down her little tiny, and went. It wasn't hard. That's all I did. It was enough. Usually. She was so easy. She was so easy to teach. If I didn't want her to do something, I just went like this. Nope. She listened. But this time, she was determined she wasn't going to listen. This reminds me of you. This is why I'm saying it to you. So then I put the tray back, and and she said, <laughs> I put the food in her mouth, and she went like that. She did this, and I pulled the tray slowly out, took her little hiney, and went, well, about the fifth time, that little hiney, it was starting to hurt. She was so upset that I did it that many times that what she did was on the fifth time it kind of like hurt a little bit to sit. So what she did was is she went and when she spilled some out of her mouth she picked it up and ate it and she never defied me again on, on anything. Well, God is just the same way with you. When he feeds you the word and you spit it out, I don't need it. You see, he calls you a child. He doesn't call you, he doesn't call you an adult. He calls you a child. You are the children of God. And unless you come unto me as a child, you're never going to see the kingdom of heaven. So here he is taking me and feeding me. And I'll never forget which psalm it was. But he gave me that psalm. I would need it. I kept spitting it out for seven solid days. Well, you know, when he told me that I was talking to God, when he revealed that to me, what happened to me was it hit me like it hit her. And so what did I do? I picked it up and I started eating it. So for a whole week, every day I ate it because I knew God by this time. I knew that when he gave me a scripture, there was always something in it. I knew that. But I was getting nothing every day. God was dead silent. And he had taught me a long time ago. The only time God does not give you an answer is when he knows you won't listen. When he knows you won't believe, you can seek him every day and he will not talk to you. Because you don't have the mind to listen or the heart. So what you've got to do is go before God and ask him to forgive you for that state of mind and that state of heart 
so that you can hear him. But you will do that. So you see, that, that doesn't happen. Because you've been told and you've been taught different things. You don't know him enough to know that that's his character. That's the way he is. He's a great father. Really, he is. He's a great son. He is a great brother. So I went seven days, and I've said this before, I went seven days. And when I went seven days and getting nothing, on the seventh day, I had proved to God that I repented and that I really wanted him. You see, that's what he was waiting for. When you don't hear from him, you have to keep on seeking him. You have to get to a place where you have to let him know. Because you see, you've already shunned him over and over and over. And he just doesn't take the insult easily. He doesn't take it lightly. It's an insult. You're, you're talking to God the Father. You're talking to Jesus Christ who died for you. And you are going to... I don't need that. I don't need to know about Jesus. I read about him over and over and over. Why, I saw this movie and I saw that movie. And I heard this preacher preach and I heard that one. I don't need to hear nothing about Jesus Christ. Now you're in a position that you have got to prove to God that you believe him. That there are secrets inside of that word about Jesus Christ you've never seen. Revelation you've never heard. Because you've heard this one. You've heard this. I listen to preaching all day long. I listen to this preacher and that preacher who gives out messages that may not even be for you because it's a distraction to take your mind into prophecy, to take your mind into, oh, I'm called to be a healer. Oh, I'm called to cast out demons. All of these distractions are what you listen to. The distractions of the mind and the soul and the heart. The distractions that lead you never into all truth. Never 